Five, four, three, two, one. Thunderbirds are go. Mr. Tracy is usually based at headquarters, but when he and I went to check out a new monorail system, we found ourselves in real danger. Tracy, something's gone wrong. We're heading for trouble. And I mean trouble. The train hadn't been properly tested. We were running at full speed with no driver and no brakes. I'm gonna call the boys. It's too late. I realize that. But if you fail, we might need help after the crash. If we survive, how are you gonna call them without Grafton knowing that we're international rescue? Leave it to me. But say, uh, Grafton, I wonder... What, 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 Tracy? Uh, have you thought of something? I don't know. Have you heard of international rescue? Uh, sure, I have. But no one knows who runs the outfit. Where do they come from? I can't say. But I believe to call them, you just send out a radio message. Yeah, yeah, I heard that. Somehow they, they pick it up. Come on! Keep at it, Brains. You're still our only hope. Somehow, I, I managed to work out a way of forcing the brakes into action. We're approaching a bend. You've got to stop this thing. All right. This is our last chance. <laughs> Going too fast! Oh, shut up. Wow! I thought we were never gonna get out of that one. But Mr. Tracy sure knew how to keep a cool head in a tough situation. Now, the Tracy brothers, Scott. Virgil, a a Alan, Gordon, and poor old John stuck up in space. Scott, the eldest, is fast talking and quick thinking. Right, Joe. Cover the takeoff. There was one time he had to act fast when he found out that security had been compromised because someone was videotaping Thunderbird 1. <laughs> The automatic camera detector. Someone's photographing the ship. I told you guys no pictures. Listen, Buster, you've done a great job here today. Now let me do mine. I said no pictures. Please destroy them. If, if you, you think, think I, I do that, that you're crazy. crazy. Crazy fools. No deal, Joe. This is the best news story we have ever had. I'm not gonna lose it now. What's going on? I've electromagnetically wiped the videotape, Cook. The entire recording is blank. Now, sorry about this, but we must protect ourselves. So long.
I, I, I think it's fair to say he's inherited his father's cool head. He's just bluffing. It's not possible. He wasn't bluffing. And it is possible. There goes your story, Ned. But if you're thinking Scott takes himself too seriously, then I'd say you'd be wrong. There was one occasion when two kids he'd rescued played a joke on him, but he took it all in good part. Dad fixed it up for us. Now you have to lie on the table, Mr. Tracy. Oh, well, I'll try anything once. Okay, Bob. Emergency, Scott. Away you go. Mr. Scott, we're sorry. I guess you're too heavy for our emergency exit. The things I do for international rescue. Virgil is the fearless one. He'll try anything if there's a chance of saving other people's lives. When we had to stop an out-of-control satellite hitting a major oil refinery, he even managed to force it off course using Thunderbird 2 as a lever. You've done it, Virgil. Oh, okay, level out. Things nearly went badly wrong. The satellite became magnetically sealed to Thunderbird 2 and seemed to be dragging us down with it. In the end, we just managed to miss the refinery and deflect the satellite into the desert. Phew! That was close. Not many people know that Virgil is also a, a gifted pianist. It's another side to his character. He's a complex guy. Alan is the youngest. And I've always had the feeling he's kind of sweet on my assistant, Tintin. Um, Alan? Uh, yes, Tintin? I've got something for you. Something? For me? Oh, I know it's not your birthday until tomorrow, but come and see what I brought back for you. It's in the bathroom. The bathroom? <laughs> Hey, what do you suppose Tintin wants to show Alan in the bathroom? Can I open my eyes yet, Tintin? Yes, you can open them now. You always said how nice it would be to have a pet. A baby alligator. Oh, no. This one's fully grown. It's a special breed of pygmy alligator. <laughs> Tintin, thank you. It's what I've always wanted. A cute little alligator. Happy birthday, Alan. Hmm. See what I mean? Uh, okay, uh, this is kind of embarrassing. I suppose we should talk about me. I was orphaned as a child and then adopted at the age of 12 by a Cambridge professor. Then I met M Mr. Tracy, and he asked me to help him accomplish his plans for international rescue, and I was delighted to accept his offer. I I I've got to admit, I just love machines. Even when I'm not working, my relaxation is designing new ways to improve my robot, Bremen. Yeah, that's a good move. I'll increase the uh, mega decibars by, say, 15 degrees. Don't you want to watch Operation Sunprobe, Brains? 
I I'd prefer to fix Brayman, Mr. Tracy. He's still far too impulsive. But brains, they're going into orbit in five minutes. Four and one quarter minutes to be precise, Mr. Tracy. One character did bridge the gap between the, 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 the character ca characters and the, and the goody-goody good, the characters. That was Brains, who was half in one camp and half in the other. Uh, uh, let's see if my improvements on you have worked. Um, it's your move. Take me. I, I don't believe it. Surely it, it can't be true. A machine cannot have a brain better than mine. I picked on that a voice aspect where he stuttered slightly because sometimes people with you know or geniuses and whose brains go like in a million miles an hour they can't get the words out fast enough to keep up with that. So it was I I you know I, I. Uh, the transistors are very uh, small in Lady Penelope's compact uh, that accounts for the faint uh, reception. But they are extremely robust. Yeah, uh, but, but it's, uh, it's still a, f a fair uh, distance away. Uh, m maybe it's not coming here. Uh, maybe it's uh, headed for the I island of Moila. Kirano, my half-brother, you will help me. Kirano! <laughs> Kirano, it is useless to resist my power. The secret of the lake must be mine. Speak, Kirano. Speak. Ah! Answer me. Was this an element of the supernatural included in the makeup of the hood, of course? He had those magic eyes that would light up from time to time and spread his particular brand of evil around the, around the scene. He's a pretty n nasty guy. I've been on the receiving end of those eyes myself. Once, on an expedition into the desert to recover some special treasure, I answered a knock at the door a little too hastily. Who are you? What do you want? Who are you? If only I could get to the radio. What would you do then, my friend? <laughs> Inform your friends at International Rescue? No, that is out of the question, I'm afraid. Where are the others? He buried me in the sand, and I I'd have been a goner if Scott hadn't arrived to get me out. But there was always a great deal of enjoyment about his villainy. He was an old-fashioned villain, and really rather nice underneath it all, you often felt. Curse those foolish boys! Curse their stupid father! And curse International Rescue! <laughs>